You guys, the uh, yeah. ceramic yeah. maker for art maker. Oh, anyway. <laughs> My daughter is an uh, integrated arts yeah. major. Okay. My yeah. name's Caitlin. I don't know. She's in a book arts class. Uh, and we're going to take uh, a <laughs> ceramic <laughs> class. That's good. I get scissors, but I just want to be able to close it up again. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Enjoy your presentation. Uh, Thanks. Graphic design, but she's kind of moved away from that. Yeah, yeah. Make it tough. If we were cowboys, we'd be able to. Like they filled my coffee up. That's a big cup. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's real nice. Now you just said. What is that? About 15 pounds or something? It's 25 pounds. As opposed to a whole 25 pounds. That's a whole bag. Yeah. Cynthia, can I start centering this? Because it'll take all morning. <laughs> okay, guys, so here's what we this is a this is a fast and furious day because we don't have very much time. So I'm gonna make um, I'm gonna make one of those bigger pots. I'll make two parts and then we'll just set them over here and forget about them. They'll dry nice and nice and slow on the wheels spinning so that every corner of them can get a view of that teton. <laughs> uh, this is self-centering <laughs> stuff. From Cynthia, Laguna, Clay? This is self-centering clay? Yeah. <laughs> if it is, I need to start using it. The SC model. You know clay comes out of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I feel like I started <laughs> learning about the Wild Clay Research Center. <laughs> I know. You know, I want to get my friend. Uh, I have my friend who had the pottery in Tetonia for years. She used to dig all sorts of stuff around there. Oh yeah, yeah. it's everywhere. That's the thing about it. Is it has it's you know things she like for glazes and yeah. 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 So, so let's see. Maybe if anybody, you guys should ask questions if you have questions along the way. This is a good trick. This this is first first uh, trick for the workshop. Uh -huh. You ever see that one? Bobber. You know how you're always losing your shame? Mm -hmm. Give yourself a bobber, Al. A bobber. <laughs> what happened to the film caster? It's gone out. Ah, yeah, it broke. <laughs> Those chamois always end up in the recycle. Which is a terrible thing for the poor Pike Nelson. So I'm going to just tell you a little bit about. Um, I used to used to have that um, ideology of whenever I would start working on the wheel a little bit, I'd stop. I'd make some cups, you know, just to kind of warm up. You know? And then I decided that now I make all my cups right at the end. Because they don't have to dry very much. And I make the bigger stuff first in a cycle of working. And I've been, so I make these bigger pots and try and let them take time to dry a little bit. And this, today I do that. Is this that glaze you uh, said you dig up? That's one of them. Yeah. That's, that's diorite, diorite granite, ground up with just a little bit of um, whiting in it. Hmm. Yeah, one rock. Beautiful. Because granite, granite's kind of like the mothership of ceramics. It's got, you know, it's ready-made glaze, really. It's got yeah. everything you need in it. Oh. Kind of. I mean, it's a lot of, lot of over, over, over simplification with it. I mean, I think that's, you just have to be careful about that. It's, it's always more complicated. You're always trying to always trying to simplify things a little bit. But uh, just a little bit of um, story about the evolution of these pots here, these jar forms that, in, at least in my my life with them. I mean, people make people have made jars, vessels forever, right? I mean, you think about the archetypal jar or vessel or pot. 
from humanity, it's a jar for them, usually. Right? It just, you know, it could be transferable to almost any culture. And, of course, um, I think it's that idea about just capturing that much space. You know? And I'm always interested in what's inside of it, like the space inside, the volume. You know, I always want it to be a little bit plumper. Never be plump enough. It's a never ending quest. So that's why I can keep making them. But I kind of got into making these things when I was a student in school. We had sort of a running joke in Kansas City. This is at the Art Institute. If if you know if you didn't have any ideas, you just make big jars. You know. And, so I didn't want to do that in Kansas City because I I wanted to pretend like I had other ideas. <laughs> I made some jar forms like that, but um, and I got this job in Montana at the Archie Bray Foundation. You guys been to the Archie Bray yet? Pretty cool. You should go there sometime. It's within striking distance from here. Yeah. It is a it's a yeah. pretty magical trip. Road trip. Yeah, it's a good road trip. <laughs> but there, you know, one of the you get this job at this place that was, it was really exciting, really a great opportunity. But they don't pay you hardly any money. It's just a reality. Right? Get, they give you a chicken shack to live out in the back. Literally. I lived in a chicken shack for 15 years. Loved it. It's a great place. But part of my salary was if I, I got all my materials and clay and firing for free, right? So I thought, okay, well, I'll just fire a lot of pots. And then I was making all those little viewers, you know, those little tiny things, little, and they take a lot of them to fill up the kilns all the time, so I thought, well, I'll just make some, knock out some big round pots and jar forms, and fill up the kilns with those, that was 30 years ago, got hooked on them, you know, <laughs> still interested. Yeah. I started trying to make them, um, just kept making them, and really, you know, it feels, sometimes I feel like the only shape I ever make is this, right? It's the same shape over and over and over and over again. But, so it's, you know, coming from a base and that swelling belly, I guess. I'm in love with that. Still. I tried to, I just made them for a long time and kept making them a little bit bigger, and then I thought, God, I just didn't want to really go much farther than that with them and then another friend was at the Bray one time and said well you should make them in two pieces so you can make them bigger and I'm like oh god I don't want to do that it's too much work but I tried it at first I would make the bottom like this just like I'm going to make a big bowl kind of thing and then I would throw the top just you know, as it would be on the pot. But it was really hard to figure out how to get that top up on the other pot. So then the light bulb went off when another friend said, why don't you just make two bowls? That's the way you do that. And so that's what I do now, is make two big bowls, and dry them slowly, and then put them together, and then throw them out. Is that two bowl approach something that was used in early play? You know, yes, I'm sure, somewhere. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of different techniques for making larger forms, for sure. So I know, I mean, I've seen a lot of people use this technique, but I've also seen people do coil, coil building with it, too. And um, I, think, I think that the only, the only thing I would say about this is that by the time I get a pot made, the whole thing is fairly flexible so I can shape it yeah. different ways. And, and the, the way of you know, having a, with the coil 
metal building, it's pretty set up on the bottom by the time you get the whole thing finished. So it's hard to shape it. So that's kind of why I felt like this was the right way to go for me. It's nice to have an electric wheel for this. of these of and a series of these is like two. <laughs> that's about that's a, and partly because that's what the kiln fits. You know, so it, it the series is sort of based around the idea of what the what a kiln will fit in it. So these go up on the top and get some of those plates on the top of it. And but then sometimes I'll if I'm really ambitious I'll make four. That'd be a really big series of them. clay I have down there. Just gonna ask that. How much it's a good you trick. Think? Yeah. Oh perfect. Half an inch. So that's a good amount. Yeah. Could go a little bit farther down. But no trimming on this. Don't need to trim it. Yeah. Just make sure you have a good floor. Mm -hmm. I used to try and flip them over and trim them. But then I realized how foolish that was. <laughs> I just make sure that that edge is cleaned up a little bit. I'm getting lazy, lazy in my old age. With that. Compressing with this? Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm also kind of working the clay back to the center too. I always believe that's helpful. I don't know. I think there's all there's a lot of. Um, there's sort of ideas I think that you get while you're working with a material that it seems like that would be the, a good thing for it to be compressed in towards the middle. I don't know if it actually really helps or not, but it sure seems like it does, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, there's some cat hair on this. <laughs> <laughs> Must be from Rosie's studio, which is my studio too. <laughs> Married to a woman who really loves cats. Cat lady. How about you? I love her. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, she I, loves him. I like that. <laughs> yeah. But not quite. We have a lot of cats. Too many. Too many for me. So I get cat hair and everything. Mm -hmm. It's like my life as a hairball. <laughs> That's why we don't have dogs, though, see, because they get in the way of the cats. <laughs> but we joke in Bozeman, you have to have, you either have to have, you know, a Subaru <laughs> or dogs. We don't have any dogs, but we have two Subarus, so we still qualify. <laughs> a lot like Drake. Yeah, a lot like yeah. Drake, I'm sure. Must be something about the half a drink view or something like that. So what if you have a Subaru and a dog? Then you're in perfect shape. Then then you're then you're. Then you're going to heaven. Then that's yeah. For two Subarus. That's gold. <laughs> one dog. You know, I'd rather have one dog. Nothing against dogs. I love dogs. I, I totally love dogs. I grew up with oh. dogs. Just that we've we've never had one. Hey, how's it going, Doug? My sister has a lot of dogs. She has, she has uh, all these people who live on her property, and they just drop the dog off for the day. Well, they go off and do their job. So she's like a, you know, built-in dog sitter all the time. She's, I don't know. She complains about it a little bit, but not very much. She likes them. Your sister make art too? She does. Yeah, she's uh, she's more of a she's actually more of a full time artist than I uh -huh. am really. Yeah, mm -hmm. she doesn't have one of those those university <laughs> subsidized university jobs. You know, uh, she's a she does painting and um, she does a lot of wire sculpture. Come on, come on, all the way up there. Mm. I like this clay. Good stuff. I thought you might. Huh? I like it. I thought you might. What is it? I tried to pick. What is it specifically? The buff with sand. The Larry's been messing with lately. It looks like it's it's the color of the of I wonder if it's Helmar Kalen in here. You guys know that clay? Mm -hmm. Comes from your own state. Yeah. You should know that clay. Helmar? Helmar. Yeah, Helmar Kalen. And you know that jar that big pot I had down in the actually that that's Helmar, that cup. Those are most Jesus. of those cups are a Helmar clay body. Yeah. But it comes from Troy by Troy, Idaho. Mm -hmm. Troy, yeah. Near Moscow. Yeah, near Moscow. Yeah. Lewiston, right? Isn't Lewiston pretty close over there, too? Yeah, south. It's south. Like an hour and a half away. It's easy to get to Troy. You guys know, know Wendt Pottery over in Lewiston? Anybody know Michael Wendt? Yeah. yeah. He's kind of like a mad scientist, isn't he? <laughs> that guy, jeez almighty. Unbelievable. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fun road trip, you guys. You should go visit Wendt mm. Pottery. Go see his operation, because he's the guy who mines this clay. Mark Allen. And anywhere you see it in the world, he's processed it. Right? Like he's the guy who's got the lease on it. Went is the one that runs that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, he's he has quite an operation going on in there. I was impressed. Does anybody get wind wind water? Like W. W E N T T. Indeed. He sells it by the box by mail. Yeah, he sells it by the box by mail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, really it's worked out perfectly because yeah, the shipping's really cheap because it's U.S. Yeah, post office. That's what it's about the same as buying. They charge their people by But he, you know, he designed the pug mail so that it would fit one of those boxes that he could send to USPS. Because <laughs> it, it'll go by by uh, size instead of weight. It's pretty smart. Good way to ship bricks around. <laughs> this 
is a favorite tool of mine. You guys know this one? Yeah, W-E-N-D-T. W-E-N-D-T. On Clearwater Avenue. Yeah. Is that, what does that mean? Is that metal? Yeah, this is metal, and it's flexible. But I just, I really like that big, sharp, that, that edge on it. And you can straighten everything out. So what this is doing, it's kind of straightening out my wiggles here a little bit, but it's also just compressing the surface on here and making it a little bit, a little bit stronger, a little tighter. And this is about a half an inch thick or so up here on the top, something like that. And I'm going to bevel the top of this out just a little bit so that the other one will bevel the other way so they can fit together that way. Mm -hmm. Nicely. That's the theory anyway. And it's always theory until you get until you get there with it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the way it's supposed to work. And whether it does or not kind of depends on the day. <laughs> honestly. Sometimes it works better than others. Some days sometimes, you know, you're you're not quite in the right space for it, or I don't know what that is, that mood thing, you know, mechanics don't quite work one day. Yeah. It's okay to have days like that, and then you just decide to do something else that day. I guess it's kind of a bugger, like, I make a lot of those tumblers like that, and Sometimes they come out like butter, and sometimes it's like they're just the hardest thing to make in the world. And the problem is sometimes you, you can't do something else because you need them. <laughs> so you have, to, you have to suffer through it.
Would that be true even if you put it like in a, in a dark room uh, without spinning it? Or would, would it? I believe it would be. <laughs> 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 Although, I mean, it's just that there's always, that would help, I'm sure. I mean, if you really put it in a, in a you know, out of the sun and out of the air movement, but it just, it always, I used to try to do that, and then I, you know, I'd wrap them up really carefully, and they'd always dry a little bit unevenly. And then one time I was doing a workshop like this, and you, you know, you have to move along, so you put it on a wheel and put the fan on it, and it was like, man, this works great. <laughs> that's a way to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do at home all the time too, like a convection. Yeah. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll throw these the night before. And then just leave them spinning all night, come in and put them together in the morning. That works nice too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want that. You want that? <laughs> just a little you, don't, you, you don't have to do anything more, Josh. <laughs> One time, um, Kurt Weiser and Archie Bray had a story about somebody who came in and, and, and who bought a big greenware pod, right? And he said, they, they took it home, they put it in the dishwasher. <laughs> Disintegrated. Oh. I don't believe him. Let's see. You know what I should ask for is, do you have any, Cynthia, do you have any extra buckets, like a five-gallon bucket of water? Or even that green, yeah, any of those, just because I usually have a issue with it. Looks like it's got pickle grease in it though. Making a mess. <laughs> that smells really good. <laughs> oh, that's my good. This one might be better. So then the other thing that I always um, try to make sure for making these things is, is make sure I have a <laughs> or slip in it? Not yeah, or just a hot can I get some water? Like mm. Yeah. So it's just a thing to rinse off in. That's going to need to be cleaned out a little bit. So always try and get bats that, are, that don't flex at all. You know, like, the, 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 you know, like these. You know. These are really yeah. flex a lot. So then what I'm going to do is make that same thing basically and then flip it over and set it on top of the pump. And if it flexes, it'll pop off of there pretty easily. So get a firm bat for the second one. Even if it's smaller, this is okay too. Did you bring this clay down with you from Montana? No. Oh. No, I like to use the local clay. <laughs> uh huh. We know our local play comes from Montana. I know. <laughs> <laughs> our, our local play comes from Idaho. <laughs> it kind of didn't look like that. I picked up a bunch for Cynthia every so often when I'm up in Helena. So sales tax, right? Picking up. Yeah, Montana doesn't. Oh, yeah. Everybody picking up right from New York. But you live out here now, kid. Yeah. Yeah. How much water you want in your bucket? Half full? Yeah, about half full. A little over half would be good. That's what I figured. So, Josh, you yeah. don't yeah, want to have a copy while you throw me. I mean, wait a minute. That's not my fault. I got a little bit. I'll take a little feeder. Sure. I'll come around and go to Bozeman and stay the night when we go to school. Because, uh... Yeah. Because it's convenient. My rods ago. I know, yeah. Enjoy yourself. Oh, yeah. Good, how are you? Yeah. How are you doing, Catherine? Oh, 
Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Didn't she go Let's go back there, Al. Yeah. Let's sleep back there. What? Where would you like this? Someone here a couple of years ago. Thank you very much. That was two years ago. Same weekend. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I figured you did. Yeah, I don't even remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's your machine. <laughs> Sorry. Because <laughs> I'm too old to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's always nice when people volunteer you for wedging. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's really funny. Warren McKenzie is 85, and everything else about him isn't so strong. But his arms are just. Um... A lot of wedging. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <A lot of laughs> wedging. <laughs> I think I did a pretty good job of wedging this one, but we'll know when it, you hear the bubbles pop as I go into the inside. <laughs> you don't want me to fire up the fan yet, do you? Do Not you? yet. six of these in the building. And they just and I was telling Cynthia that you can you put this on at night, just let it run overnight. You know, well nobody's here because then it's it's when it's uh, quiet. Then it just kinda then it just cleans the air. Yeah. It works I like good. the timer idea. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's always an issue, right? You guys this 
You guys really keep a nice clean shop in here. I'm impressed. <laughs> it only took about three hours of cleaning yesterday to accomplish. But <laughs> we clean our studio three times a week now. Yeah. Were we doing yeah. that when you were there? No. Maybe we were lucky if it was once a week then, right? <laughs> Susan here is our cleaning hero. I think I better step it up. I only clean once a week. <laughs> We have, a, we have floor drains, and we just hose the whole place down. Mm -hmm. Your studio is open 24 hours, probably, so... It's open 28 hours. <laughs> <laughs> a day. 28 hours yeah, an so hour. So theoretically, this studio shouldn't need as often of cleaning since it's not open as much. <laughs> Yeah, it, that may that may change at some point, but I, my attitude is that as long as we can get away with it, I'll, I want it to be as wide open as possible. And it, but it's a little nerve-wracking. You know? <laughs> and I, I think that they go through different periods. I think in the past they went through different periods of sort of shutting it down. And I, we had the same issue with the brain, too. I mean, we keep, kept it open all the time. And, you know, you just you count on people being insensible, which is always debatable. <laughs> <laughs> because it's those guys who come in the middle of the night that, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. nobody's yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. It's a nightmare. Yeah, this one kid, <laughs> just recently, this guy comes in, you know, and I'm in, for some reason I was in there at an odd hour. And this guy comes in, and he's, uh, I see him kind of looking around, I'm like, can I help you? You know, he said, uh, well, yeah, I, 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 made a, I made a cup over here, and I just wanted to see if I could glaze it. And I'm like, what class are you in, you know? So, uh, I'm, I'm in the music department over here. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I have really mixed feelings about him, so like, well, you know, you can't really do that. You're not supposed to do that. But, yeah, what'd you make? Let's see what you got. <laughs> Booked him up. And then he, then he came in and glazed it with the totally wrong thing anyway. And it's, so he got the wrong bucket. Because it's confusing, right? There's so many possibilities. Especially if you're trying to run more than one thing. So we have earthenware, stoneware, called sick stuff going now. So the stuff is everywhere. And... Even the, not even the majors can't keep it straight, let alone some kid off the street. <laughs> okay, so this goes all the way down the bottom on this one. This will be the top, upside down. So it's no no floor on this one. So any of you guys making the trek out to uh, Enseca, Milwaukee? Yeah. One. One? Yeah. Get a little cheese. Some cheese and pass blue ribbon out there. Right. Well, it's not bad for you. I've never been to Milwaukee. I'm kind of excited. Huh? It's pressing me to Enseca right now. Who is it? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> She's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, her. Can't forget old what's her name? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't say her in the You don't go to the meetings? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't read it. I don't read it. I don't read it. I don't read it. Josh, this is Sam. He runs the program over in Jackson. Ah, excellent. 
Ron Myers, one of my favorite potters. You guys know a guy, a potter named Ron Myers from Georgia? And he's real casual about his stuff. And, and you know, his lids are, you know, they're a little more pop, hockey puck kind of oriented. So he slides them. But they fit with the work really well. So it kind of, kind of the, the precision of the work sort of dictates that. Josh, where was uh, Val Cushing? Where, where did he? Alfred. Alfred, I thought he was. Yeah. Saying. He was he was born in Alfred, went to school in Alfred, <laughs> raised his had his whole life in Alfred. Wow. You know, I don't think he was born there, but his but he you know he went to school there and then he ended up being there forever teaching. We had the same birthday. Which is January twenty eighth. Had two students this year had the same birthday. Another student a couple years ago had the same birthday. I counted up 12 of us. Wow. You no, know, 12 people. How many of you guys know 12 people have the same birthday? It must be some about January 20th. What's, what's the date? Is there a holiday nine months prior to? <laughs> <laughs> Sweetheart day or something? Yeah, it must be. Let's, let's figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Easter bunnies. Easter bunnies, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Something to do with those bunnies. 29th? That's uh, Bolkus' birthday. You guys almost got it right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then uh, Steve Lee, who's the director at Archie Bray right now, is the 30th. So, what is it? What is it? 30th? Pretty close. Yep. It's probably prom. It's prom. Prom. It's prom. <laughs> prom. Prom. I'm saying it's prom. It doesn't, yeah, my, my parents were definitely a prom. <laughs> <laughs> Their kids weren't even a prom. <laughs> but you're right. That's about right. It's yeah. graduation then. Yeah. Graduation. Graduation. Let's celebrate. Yeah, at Alfred, there was, we had five of us who had the same birthday. We'd all get together. Val was our ringleader. You know, it was pretty nice. Did you just do your undergrad there? Or? No, I did my grad work there. Okay. Yeah. Undergrad at Kansas City. Okay. Yeah, it was, and it was a great experience. It was, you know... When you live in Montana or probably Idaho or Wyoming, when you go to Kansas City, it's like going back east. Right? It's always fun to say, "Yeah, I'm going back east, I'm going to Kansas City." You're like, huh? Where are you from? But the Art Institute was a really good school because it was uh, there weren't any grad there weren't a, there wasn't a graduate program there. So no grads would get in the way, so all the attention was on the undergraduate, and that was, that was pretty good. And it's right across the street from a really fantastic art museum called the Nelson Atkins Museum, one of the great kind of classic museums in the Midwest. It had one of the best collections of ceramics, I think, just phenomenal ceramics there. And I, I think it was, you know, a big part of it because the, the school, there was a really good relationship between the school and the, and the museum. Students could go there for free, so you could just go in any time and just, you know. I mean, to have a, have a, have a examples like that right next door, it's pretty important, pretty spectacular. It kind of gives you a sense of, you know, what the possibilities are. Yeah. And really good barbecue. <laughs> Kansas City's got great barbecue. Good stuff here. Yeah. Oops. There's some music. Really good music too. Yeah. Uh, it's a great. It's a great city. Really great city. I like Kansas City a lot. You guys should put it on your calendar because NC is going to be there in a couple of years. It's the 50th anniversary, so it'd be kind of...
kind of a big, big deal. You go to all the NC gifts, Josh? I pretty much do. I've missed, you know, I've missed a couple of them. I like missing them, but when I did miss it, I missed it. Because <laughs> I, I, we went with Archie Brave all all the time. Uh -huh. Have a booth, and now, you know, now with school we have a table too. It's sort of, I'm just afraid not to go. You know, I'm afraid I'm gonna miss something. Yeah. And then when I'm there, I'm like, God, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so tired of this. You know, but I I like seeing everybody. That's a nice thing. Yeah. I think that's. The, Quite a network of people out there, but I'm always, you know, I'm, I always have, I always have mixed feelings about it. Like I get kind of depressed by it too, because you just get overwhelmed by all the stuff that's going on. There's so much going on, and then you kind of go, God, what am I doing? You know. But I think that that's okay. I mean, it's good to have that that double sort of edge thing. Okay, a little bit farther. I think they're, you know, I don't know. I like, I like the smaller conferences definitely quite a bit better. Um, but you know, there's not really any way they can do that. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't really blame Nsika. It's just kind of became become what it's become, and it's pretty fantastic overall. I mean, the amount of work that you can see. Yeah, in one place, and I mean the amount of information that's there, and people from all over the world. You know, I think it's uh, it's pretty impressive what happens, really. But you know, there's a there's a really nice conference called uh, Utilitarian Clay Conference. It's at out at Aramont in Tennessee. It happens about every four years. And for pottery, I think that's a really, that's a good one. They limit, limit it to about 200 people. Another really good um, opportunity for learning about pots. There's a there's these a couple of different ones that are happening around the country now. But um, there's a studio tour sale in May in Minnesota. I brought a Saint, picture for that. Saint Croix. Yeah. Yep. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You can. It's worth the trip up there for the weekend. Go up there for the weekend rent a car and go around and see like so much stuff it'll just make you naughty. Where? <laughs> right outside of uh, Minnesota. Yeah. Is that the North Carolina version of that? Yes. Yeah. It's really cool. When do they have a weekend studio tour sale thing? Yeah, it's huge. It's like I mean I've looked at the map of all the studios that this is like we're going to start doing that in Montana. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah, why not? Day late, dollar short, but we'll turn it into something else. <laughs> Quite a bit of it happens in uh, Helen already that way. But the St. Croix one is really something. They sell. They sold a half a million dollars worth of pottery in a weekend, for like four hundred fifty thousand. But what's really good about that is that the sales are really good. So people who are doing the show bring a lot of really really good work. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. May 9th, 10th, and 11th, just in time for Mother's Day. So it's people from all over. Yeah, people from all over. So Sarah Yeager group. from Helena will be there. Yeah, Steve Lee's going too. Steve Lee. Yeah. And there's a, a 
group of about maybe seven studios, seven or eight studios, and they all invite people to their studios. And then, you know, you just, and then you can go around to all the different ones and stuff. So it's good. And they say it take a couple days. Yeah, it's good to take a couple of days at least. Yeah. I think that North Carolina one's in the spring, too. But there was like, yeah, when I looked at it last, we were almost like 35 was participating. Do you ever trim a whip on that, Josh? What's that? Do you ever trim a whip? You know what I mean? Just square it out, even it out more with like your cut, cut it off or anything? No. I don't. No. And I want it to be beveled like that. Yeah. Right? You imagine the opposite. Maybe the opposite of that. Right. And I'm going to score it. Stuff and so it'll all you know it all kind of softens up quite a bit. You mean how uneven it is? Yeah, a little bit. This this one's really even. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's a self-centering play. Get up. <laughs> That didn't take too long, only about an hour. That's not bad. Always takes a little while. Could have made these last night, but it wouldn't have been the same, right? <laughs> so then I've got all this clay down here on the bottom, too, that can become a lip on the pot, too. Quite a bit of thickness down in there. You know, take a little bit out. It's, it's not plug in. Oh, yeah, that'd be really plug helpful. In.